Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 996. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about inflation because it's the highest since 1947, not since 1982, like the news is reporting. And I'm going to show you how the real numbers should be calculated, not the fake numbers that we're hearing on the news. Because years ago, the way that the numbers were calculated was changed. That was back in 1980, when inflation was soaring back then as well. The government decided to take out the housing inflation number and instead change it to the housing owner equivalent rent. That would be if you rented your house to yourself, what would you charge? Yes, that's right. They took out the home mortgage or rent costs and created an absolutely fictitious number called the owner equivalent rent. This allowed them to control how much rents were really escalating so they could keep the numbers down. And thereby, it reduced the cost of living adjustments for Social Security and for lots of things that are indexed to the consumer price index. So therefore, it kept the budget deficit smaller and it made the amount that they would have to pay out much less, which of course was not good for the consumer. So when we look at the actual numbers, and when I say we, it's actually a very smart gentleman named John Williams who runs a website called Shadow Stats, like statistics, S-T-A-T-S dot com, shadowstats.com, and he calculates the old calculation that the government used to do to what they're doing now and gives you the number in the adjusted terms back to the 1980 model. And that model is showing that real inflation is running about 7 to 8% above what is being reported to us. So therefore, he's saying the actual number of the inflation amount should be 15.1% annually. And that takes us back to 1947, because we have not seen inflation running 15% plus per year since 1947, not 1982, like they're reporting on the news. I've noticed this personally because on my last trip to the grocery store, my bill was about double what it usually is. And then today from my old hometown in Bellevue, Washington, I read someone actually paid a million dollars over the asking price for a home. It was a home that was listed for 2.65 million, but sold for a million more, all cash, because it was close to Amazon and where Facebook Meta are expanding. Besides that, we have some unsubstantiated numbers that come off of Twitter, but seem very on target to me, much more on target again than what is being reported. They are reporting used cars up 40.5% year over year, rental cars up 29%, utility gas up 24%, Hotels up 21%, furniture up 20%, bacon up 18%, steak up 17%, that seems like it's closer to at least 50% higher, peanut butter up 15.5%, pork up 14.5%, fish up 13%, eggs up 13%, new cars up 12%, electric up 11%, chicken and oranges up 10%. Now, one person said gasoline today is $3.59 a gallon, and it was $2, so the difference is $1.59. So $1.59 divided by $2 is a 79.5% increase, not a 40% increase 
But nonetheless, those numbers ring pretty true to me and a lot more true than what is being reported. The news articles are reporting closer to a 7% increase year over year for food, which of course lumps all kinds of different prices together, some which have gone up much more than others. So it's really not fair to just say it's 7% across the board or that overall consumer goods were up 7.5% compared with a year ago. That's according to the Labor Department, and that seems extremely low. I think what we're really seeing here is the fact that paper money has been printed so excessively that the value of paper money is losing its purchasing power. And I think we'll see more of that probably a little bit later in the spring, where my models pick up for silver and precious metals to really start to rise, probably as a hedge against that purchasing power loss. But right now, markets are trying to figure it out, trying to figure out whether interest rates are going to go up to try to curb inflation or whether interest rates aren't going to go up. You know my forecast. I have a couple of interest rate hikes this year, but not a lot. And that's a good thing because interest rate hikes would simply slow down the economy, slow down the housing market. And well, that would affect one of the most successful areas of the market. And that works for the everyday investor. We will likely see a rush for people buying more physical goods and out of cash or cash savings as they buy more crypto, as they buy more homes, as they buy more physical assets that maybe they weren't going to buy for a year or two in the future, but decide to do it now and move those purchases up in anticipation of higher inflation and higher prices coming later. So that just creates more momentum with people spending more, getting rid of cash, moving out of cash into assets that are going to maintain their value or buying things in anticipation of future use so that they can buy them now before prices go up. So what can you do to combat this? The best thing you can do is think about some physical assets. Think about moving money into things that you do need to purchase, that you do need to have, getting those ahead of time. If you're remodeling, buy all of your materials ahead of time. Get your contracts and your contractor's rates in writing and buy the things that you're going to need in the future now. And from an investment perspective, cryptocurrency stocks and precious metals and mining stocks are probably going to be the best place to keep your purchasing power ahead of an eroding currency so that you're actually benefiting from this inflationary mode rather than having your money sitting in cash in a bank, losing purchasing power. I wrote about that in my book, Three Steps to Quantum Wealth. The Wealth Heiress's Guide to Financial Freedom by Investing in Cryptocurrencies explains exactly what's happening right now in the book because so much money was created in the last year and how to protect your purchasing power. So check that out on Amazon. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.